Are you ready to go over today's homework? Today's, we're going over Monday's homework. So you can take out your homework and um, follow along. Welcome to change your answers as you need to. I may not go over every single problem, but obviously the ones that I do, you can um, go over. Change your answers. Okay, so the first thing we have is to find the sum. Raise your hand, tell me what is a sum. Yes, you are right. Think it in your head, very good. A sum is the answer to an addition problem. So we have to add three and 785 thousands, and we need to line up our decimals. That's the most important part, right? So when you do this, go ahead and put your decimal underneath. So we are adding 625 and 9 tenths. So the in the number 625 and 9 tenths, you look and see, okay, here's my decimal. So on this side is my five, so it goes here. On this side is my nine. Now you can work your way back. So then you need a two here, a six here, and you can fill in zeros here and here. Okay, so check the back of your work. I'll flip it over and see if you lined it up correctly. Then you can just add them all together, seven and nine, because 10 plus seven is 17, so nine plus seven would be 16. Five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. So we get 629 and 685 thousandths. Okay, um, let's do find the difference. So we've got 212 and 8 tenths minus 65 and 7 tenths. So 8 minus 7 is 1, 2 minus 5 I won't have enough so I need to borrow from my neighbor. So instead of 1 they've got 0 and instead of 2 I now have 12. So 12 minus 5 7. 0 minus 6, uh, can't do it, so we borrow. So instead of 2, I have 1, and instead of 0, I have 10. So now we can do 10 minus 6, so we think about what goes with 6 to make 10. And then 1 minus nothing. Our decimal goes in one straight line. Go ahead and say that decimal in your head, in your head, in your head, not out loud. 147 and 1. Death. Okay, let's do the quotient one. So we're going to solve 7 into 857 and 6 tenths. Okay, so the first thing we do, well, let me write it over here. So the first thing we need to do is divide. So we say how many times does 7 go into 8? Well, 7 times 1 is 7, so 1 time. 7 times 1, we just figured out was 7. It gives us 1 left over. So we bring down our 5. How many times does 7 go into 15? Well, 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14. 14 is as close as you can get. So 7 times 2 was 14. Get 1 left over. Bring down our 7. How many times does 7 go into 17? Well, we just figured out 7 times 2 is 14. That's as close as we can get. 14, catch, I would just count up here, 15, 16, 17 would be 3. Now 7 into 36. 7 times 5 is 35, as close as we can get. I'm running out of room, uh-oh. So we get one left over, but the directions today say to report your remainder as a decimal, which means we can't just put a remainder 1 here. So we need to add a 0, bring it down, divide again. 7 goes into 10 once, which would be seven, I'm just gonna rewrite mine up here. I'm just moving that here, which would be three left over. Bring down a zero, uh-oh, it's not gonna end yet. Seven goes into 30 four times because it's 28. You get two left over, bring down another zero. Uh-oh, I don't think this is ever gonna end. Two would be two times, which is 14. Yep, so this one's not gonna end. So let's put our decimal straight up and let's talk about what to do when it keeps going like this because it's not, it didn't end nice and beautiful. So what we need to do is we need to at least go to the thousandths place. So we didn't really need to do this last one but I just wanted to see if it would end. So we go to the hundredths place 
or sorry, we go, we make our decimal go into the thousands place, which is right here, but we need to round it to the hundredths place because that's like a very normal place, right? We have money and other things that are in the hundredths. So we are going to round it to here. So we say, all right, I'm got a one in the hundredths place. I look next door. It's a four, which means it's closer to rounding down, right? Because we've done that a lot. So our final answer would just be 122 and 51 hundredths because it doesn't round up to the next number. Okay, cool. Let's do a hundredth less and a hundredth more. So the first one that we had was five and 83 hundredths, and we need to do a hundredth less and a hundredth more. So which number's in the hundredths place? Go ahead and think it in your head. Maybe underline it on your paper. Should be this three is in the hundredths place. So we think what's one hundredth less than that? So you can even think of this as money. Think of a penny less. So we'd have five and 82 hundredths. And then think of a hundredth more. Five and 84 hundredths, right? And then once we have three in a row, it really works like a number line. Five and 82 hundredths, five and 83 hundredths, five and 84 hundredths. Pretty simple. Okay, let's do the next one. We've got 92 and 7 tenths. So we don't have a hundredths place here, which makes it a little bit trickier. Do you remember what we can do if we do not have a number in that place? We can just add a zero, right? Because it doesn't have a value, so add a zero. So now we do have a hundredths place. So here we have to say, well, what's less than zero hundredths? But that's kind of confusing because there's not really anything less than zero. But that doesn't just say zero hundredths, it says 70 hundredths, right? So what's one hundredth less than 70 hundredths? Or if we're thinking about money, what's le one penny less, because that's what we're doing, right, is a penny. What's one penny less than $92.70? Would be $92.69, because 69 hundredths would come right before 70 hundredths. And so then one hundredth more should be easy, right? 69 cents, 70 cents, so 92 and 71 hundredths, okay? And then finally, we have 392 thousandths. We need to think of a hundredth more and a hundredth less. Let's do less first. So first we gotta find the hundredths place. Go ahead and underline it if you haven't. So we think what's one hundredth less than what I currently have. So instead of 392, it's one less, so 382 thousandths. And then one hundredth more, well, remember what's one hundredth more than nine? Ten, but we can't just squeeze a ten in there, right? So this is where you can think of it as thirty-nine hundredths and think go up to the next hundredth after that. So one hundredth more would be four hundred two thousandths. And if you weren't sure about that, you could add on a hundredth like so. Carry that and you get 402 thousandths, okay? Let's go on to the next thing. Next, we need to look at those decimals. We did the first one on the board today, the, um, the one on this side of the square. Someone told me there were 53 squares shaded, if you remember, but we're supposed to show the decimal, so it's 53 out of 100 possible squares. So we would say this fraction, 53 hundredths, and so we would write a decimal that sounds just like that as 53 hundredths, right? That's how we'd say it, 53 hundredths. So that one's easy. And then the other one, let's see how many squares are there. 10, 20, 79 out of 100 squares, should be. So it works the same way. It says 79 hundredths. So the decimal would be 79 hundredths. So you're not writing this, you're writing these as your answers. Okay, measuring to the nearest half of a centimeter. I said this to some classes, but I don't know if I said to everybody that just because you're measuring to the nearest half centimeter doesn't mean that it can't be a whole centimeter. It just could also be a half centimeter. So if I can just kind of zoom in on that, that line, it looks to me like it is between five and six, but maybe not quite to this halfway mark but I would still say it's closest to the halfway mark. So I would call this one five and a half centimeters. Does anyone know another way you could write five and a half centimeters? 
you could write 5.5 centimeters. Either of these are okay. And then the second line, let's see. The second line is, it looks like it's just barely past two. Like maybe like that. So I really don't think it's closer to half than it is to the whole um, number. So I would just call this one two centimeters because even though it says you can, you're supposed to measure the nearest half centimeter, this is a half a centimeter, half a centimeter, half a centimeter, right? Each Between each whole centimeter is a half, but then the whole number is also a half, if that makes sense. Okay, and then finally, we need to look at area and perimeter. So we talked about this today. Our rectangle looks like this. We had six centimeters and 11 centimeters. So if we wanna find the area, it's the whole inside. It's like how I said that if I wanted to buy a new bulletin board, paper or fabric or whatever to cover the background, I would need to find the area. Area is solved by doing length times width because it works like an array. An area is like the word array, area, array, right? Very similar. Because I could make an array for six by 11. Remember we did arrays like way, way, way at the beginning of the year? So an array that's six by 11 would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then 11 this way, remember? So I didn't space it out very well. I should have like filled this whole thing in, but I didn't because I was just trying to figure it out. So I did a six by 11 array, covered the whole area, right? It's like filled in. So that's the same thing as doing six times 11, right? Because an array shows multiplication. So what would the area of this shape be? Six times 11 is 66, and then we need to use our unit. So our unit for area is in centimeters squared. It's really important that you put this squared because we multiplied six times 11, and we also multiplied centimeters times centimeters. And remember from when we did square numbers and stuff, when you multiply like the same number times itself, it's three squared or whatever it is squared. So it's centimeters squared because we multiplied the centimeters times the centimeters. There's some other reasons we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay, and then we need to find the perimeter. The perimeter is the distance around the outside of a shape. Like if I was doing my bulletin board and I wanted new borders, I would have to find the perimeter. So I do the perimeter by adding all the sides. So this is a little bit confusing because you can't just add six and 11 because that's not all the sides. That's only two of the sides, right? So we have to add all the sides. So we talked about this today, but you guys told me that this one was 11. Opposite sides are the same. You totally get that, which is awesome. So all you have to do is add those together. I always add this, the like sides at once. 11 and 11 would be 21. 22, oh my gosh, duh. 11 and 11 would be 22, plus six and six would be 12. So you just have to add those together. You get... 34. And our unit here is just centimeters because we didn't multiply, so we didn't do centimeters times centimeters. We just added the same thing up. So perimeter, we would need one long thing, whereas area is different. It's like one, it's like a square. So that's why it's centimeters squared, just because it makes a square. But this, this, even though it's in the shape of a square, if we undid it all, it would make one long line, right? We would, it would be six plus 11 plus six plus 11 in one long line. Okay, so uh, hopefully that all makes sense to you and you'll be able to do your homework tonight with no problem. And